Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back to another Logging from Scratch episode. Uh, so, this is going to be the last episode of the beautiful Rogue River map. So, um, I really, really want to get started on Port Murray, because I do want to do a logging literally from scratch, where we start with, you know, next to nothing, and we work our way up. Uh, so this was, I just wanted to kind of clean up what we had, and uh, maybe just kind of take a quick review here of what we've done. Um... So last time we were playing, we were just kind of cutting over in that swamp. I'm not going to run all the way over there. But um, we just kind of cleaned up the little piles that were there. And this was kind of the last little bit remaining uh, that we hadn't skidded forward. So I was going to throw all this on the truck. And we cut these, like, extremely long. I can't remember what we were cutting to. I recorded so long ago now that I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, on the verge of this last episode, um, I've applied the new update. Now, you guys are probably confused because by the time you're seeing this video, it's probably this patch or this update's been out for about a month already because i'm always kind of like a month ahead for scheduling or as close to that as i can get so um this is the big update for me in this series um we've added the new tracks on there so big big thank you to umbreon who is the guy who converted um the tracks from fs 17 over to fs 19 and i also wanted to say thanks to kenny the guy who made the script um for these new tracks, he updated it so that these tracks will work with 19. So I spoke to Kenny via email there and got his permission to use these. And I still have permission to use these from 17 from, I believe it was FT Modding that had these. Um, but yeah, so these are all on the machines now, and they are just gorgeous. Here, we'll hop in and do a little, little drive about. These tracks are so sweet. And there's new sound effects for the tracks. Gives them a nice, dirty crunchy squeaky sound effect which actually sounds really cool when you're trekking around but yeah they're they're great tracks the other huge change um on all these machines i mean there's tons of things that happen with this update the biggest change uh is the weight so these machines are now extremely heavy so um when you're picking stuff up they stay a lot more stable they look a lot more real you know but i'm not going to go over every update because i've already had an update video um showing you guys all the stuff on these Point being, these are the new updated machines for my series, so it's pretty sweet. Also, there's a guy in the cab now. Look at me. Hey, buddy. I think a lot of people wanted uh, a character in the cab, so we are finally able to achieve that. And that's a big thanks to um, Chad, Mithrith Catalyst. Uh, sorry, my joy key's not on, so how am I supposed to drive around? There we go. Um, yeah, he was uh, the one who basically encouraged me and gave me the uh, the rundown on how to add the person in the cab because I was just too lazy and didn't think it was important before but granted it does look a lot better having a character in the cab now well, let's not grab too many of these now these machines are ridiculously heavy now so you can pretty much handle whatever amount of wood you want and it stays like, remotely stable like this feels really good when I'm doing this I'm actually just going to back up a little bit And we're gonna oop. Man, I hate I hate trees that are this long. This is brutal. Mostly because of depth perception and because I can't look out really look out my side windows, I guess. So when you're trying to load these really long ones, in real life, you know, you can, you know, turn your head to look down to one end of the load or the other. Um, I imagine things like track IR and stuff would come into play for that, but unfortunately I get um violently motion sick when I use track IR. Which is odd, because I've played some horrible VR games and I don't get much motion sick, but that definitely does it for me, for sure. Well, I guess that's what we're getting out of that bundle. Oop. But, yeah. So, I did... I have tried track IR. I've had that question, actually, quite a few times. Is Have I tried track IR? And I definitely have. And it was a neat idea. I wouldn't. What I wouldn't mind doing is having uh, VR episodes where we can get the VR working in it. And I think I can. I think I know exactly what I need to do to get it working. I just... Uh, the problem is there is no depth perception um, when you're in VR. So you're basically going by Braille. Uh, I'm actually going to go like this. Now, these are pretty long, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do that in one swing. I want this butt end forward. Oops, grabbed a stump. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, I grabbed a stump. Oh, these are heavy. 
when these machines are moving like the new updated ones that's how you know these are heavy because my lord these are heavy machines now there we go that looks pretty good beauty well almost a beauty load anyway uh, uh, there we go. So yeah, Port Murray is going to be our next map. That one's going to be pretty exciting. And it's going to be weird because we're starting from the base. Oh, I actually ha I have a... I forgot. I have a, a toy to show you guys today. And actually, by the time this video is coming out, this thing should be coming out... Well, I'm, I'm aiming for the end of October for this other toy to come out. Um, because it's orange and it's Halloween. And I don't know. That's going to be my justification. <laughs> That's how I'm playing it anyway. Uh, okay, so that looks good. That's our last load off this map right there. So I'm actually just going to park this thing over here. And we'll leave it right there. Now, that's not exactly a crazy super load, but... Well, actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do this trick. There's a trick. You can, like, back it up and bang the load a little. To straighten it out. I don't know if that's a very realistic trick or not, but why not? I've seen them do crazier things in the woods. So yeah, everything's extremely heavy now. Oh look, see, and there's a guy in there too. It does look a little bit better having a guy in the cab because it was a little weird. Um, especially for like the logging crew series. Now I'll be able to actually see people in equipment. That'll be kind of huge. Because it's a little weird seeing a, tr a skitter go by with no operator in it. You're like, wait, what? So let's haul this all back. The truck's weight's been increased, so it drives a, a little bit more sturdy. It's a little less bouncy side to side. I didn't want to get rid of the bounce entirely. Like, I want it to feel like you're, you know, driving down a dirt road, getting your your butt beat up. But uh, I figured, hey, let's, let's give it a shot and see how much weight we can put on this bad boy. I was going to do a topic of the day today, but you know what? Topic of the day today is going to be my mods. <laughs> and since this is the last episode, we got to have a little bit of fun. I was gonna try to add up money, but I don't think uh, I don't think money's really gonna matter on this one. The next one, I know, and I haven't really been keeping track of money because a lot of people uh, a lot of people wanted me to keep track of money, and I was like, uh, I didn't on this one. But the next one, when I do the Port Murray actual true logging from scratch, um, we are definitely going to have. Oops, I guess that's not really the midpoint from lifting it there. Oop. Let's try a little further back. These are so long, these logs. It's crazy. Apparently this LeBear can handle them, though. Look at this. Like I said, everything's pretty extremely heavy now. Probably unrealistically heavy, but... My real goal was to make the machines dominate the wood as opposed to the wood dominating the machines. That was kind of the... the plan, anyway. Uh, let's throw that right there. Because I was really tired of when I was bunching or when I was picking up stuff. To have the trees just throw the machine around like it was a rag doll, because in real life they don't really do that. I mean, granted, if you do grab something crazy heavy in reality, um, you're going to have probably some jumpy, wiggly effects. Because I've been in real machines and it does happen, but not to the extent where the machine's tracks are bouncing left and right, bouncing left and right. You know, like, it, oh, it was just irritating. And it wasn't until um, Umbreon and me were recording some intro video stuff that I was watching these machines operate and it just they just bounce around so much like they were just side to side bounce 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 side to side and I was like okay that's I just can't have this anymore so I spent a lot of hours an extremely large amount of hours uh, trying to figure out the perfect weight system and I think this is pretty much as good as as good as she gets for now anyway till some other new breakthrough comes through but I'm pretty happy with the results so far all right, so let's see how much those long, long loads are worth. Probably not as much because they're not processed, they're not shorts. All right. Trying too hard there, machine. All right, here we go. Let's go sell this. Bloop. Yeah, $35,000 for all of that. You know what, guys? Short logs are where it's at. There's no point in really doing longs. Um... 12s, I think, aren't too, too bad, but, yeah, this these were terrible. That was a bad combination. All right, so now, um, that like I said, that was our last load on this map. It's actually been a really cool series, and, I mean, there's there's a 
pretty strong chance I'd come back to this map again for another another round because this is fun. Um, more than likely, what I'll do is I'll play with it in either our logging from scratch or, or uh, logging from scratch, <laughs> logging bros, or in the logging crew series because this would actually be a super fun map. And now I want to show you guys a new toy. Well, you guys have probably seen little hints of it. I've been throwing it out left and right, but this is the official testing video. So let's go find it. Oh, look, there it is. This is the brand new Timber Pro 765C. Uh, and it actually has the ability to tilt up and down uh, with a manual tilting ability. So it's pretty sweet. As you can see, I was doing a little bit of testing here to see how it was. But um, yeah, this will be the official testing video. Because I've used it a little bit, but I haven't really tried it on intense terrains like this so let's give it a shot so yeah like i said it is a full tilter unit so um the same button that you use to do your uh telescopic arm like to pull the forward arm in and out now lowers it down and you can you know do your full rotation left and right but just kind of the, the whole purpose of this if you don't know what a tilter is for it's to keep your cab level while you're bunching because normally if if you were like this now you're kind of like bunching on a weird angle up a hill fighting yourself, but this now you can stay level with the ground as you climb the uh, climb the hill. So what we're going to do, I'm going to fire this bad boy up, we're going to do some, some testing here. Now Grant, I have not spent a lot of time in this thing yet, so I'm going to be learning as we go. But now with the new weights of the machines, we're just going to make piles here. We're not actually doing anything with this wood, I just want to kind of have some fun here. But now with the ability to cut the wood straight on with the tilt and with the new extreme weights, um, you can pretty much tackle any kind of terrain with this bad boy. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm just going to kind of start roasting trees. Now granted, this arm on this one's a little bit longer, so you, you kind of got to work at a little bit more of a, a medium range. If you try to get too, too close, you're probably going to get hung up on your own... Uh, arm extension being too short so that's why i say every, keep everything in a kind of optimal range but i mean like watch this thing climb this hill let's back up and do this again because it's so extremely heavy now these machines they just basically glue to the ground which is pretty realistic um you still can't climb like if it's 90 degrees obviously this machine's gonna crap out on you but i mean it's pretty cool to to see how it can uh like bite into the terrain right i'm just playing with my tilter ability here so yeah, you get a free, a full 360 degree rotation while you can tilt and you're not going to hit the cab at all. I played around with that for a long time. I accidentally lowered it way too far on one side uh, when I was messing around in the uh, in the files <laughs> and it was really funny because it hit the cab all the time and then it tried to eat itself. The physics were not enjoying that. Oh. Of course the trees still like to be trees. But at least now, like I said, with these new weights, you really do dominate the trees like the trees don't control you you control the trees so like for instance like we're sitting pretty level and pretty steady right now going up this hill you can still get a bit of rock in your machine if you start slamming it around or acting like see right now i'm on an uneven piece of ground so you're gonna have some wiggle but it's still way more solid than it ever has been and i'm really really happy with the results I've been loading and practicing and playing around with stuff for the last little bit and oh, i'm so happy with how how they look because basically what i did is i was um sitting at home and i was like oh man i'm gonna go check out some videos of machines working just because i was bored and i had to kill some time so i was watching these machines like bunchers and loaders and stuff working around and i'm like man i'm like these things don't really move around a whole lot i mean they shake in the cab like the, i could see the operator bouncing back and forth but watching from a third party or a third person view of like someone operating it they don't like they don't like bounce around they don't act crazy they look pretty normal um they stay pretty level you'd have to be knocking down some pretty extreme trees for them to kind of kick back but then i compared it to what we have on our machines and i'm like oh god i'm like man ours bounce around like they're cartoon toys so um i said the only way to really fix it would be to add an extreme amount of weight so the thing stays on the ground and it can handle the trees without even thinking about it but I said the problem was, if I add a whole bunch of weight, I think a whole bunch of other problems are going to come into play. And, uh, yeah, they ended up not coming into play. 
I was able... Oh, see? <laughs> That's good. That had nothing to do with my machine, so Giants is totally responsible for that tree jumping back at us. <laughs> but yeah, with the... Um, with the new weight, like I said, it's... Uh, yeah, you don't have a problem. And it's fun because... Having the tilter ability is fun because... You have the manual ability to adjust yourself whatever terrain you want. You can, you know, start backing off as you go up the hill. It's a really cool um, feature to have. And I was thinking about doing it. I should do it on the 909 as well because the 909 is a tilter machine. Oh, God. Why does it keep doing that? Trees are too heavy for the land or something. I don't know what that's going on. Uh, let's see if we can get you here. There we go. Go away. Um, but yeah, the 909 is technically also a tilter machine. I just didn't really know the best way to do that before. But now after building this one, I'm like, oh, actually, I could probably add a tilting ability pretty easily to a lot of these things. Okay, so we'll gently drop this one. There you go. Don't want to throw the trees. Apparently, that makes them bounce off the ground and come back to you. But like this kind of bunching for me, like it feels so easy now. Because I'm not really fighting the machine like I was before. Before, I really felt like I was fighting the machine... Bouncing around, you know, acting kind of dumb. But now it sits level. It sits steady and there's no shaking or bouncing. So it's like a buncher's kind of dream almost to have this machine like this. Because now it's almost realistic. Probably, it's prob obviously it's not 100% realistic. It's Some of these trees should be uh, probably making the, the buncher bounce around a little bit, but... At the same time, this is um, this is a game, and you know we can only get so real. And the trees in this game definitely aren't super realistic, so it's hard to really um, judge how it's going to go. But like I said, I'm I'm super happy with the way this thing operates. And like I said, with the ability to adjust your your angles, I mean, well, I mean, think about earlier when we were bunching with the 909. Do you think we would have been able to go up this straight incline? Remember how much trouble we were having before? And we just did this whole chunk, this whole strip with that buncher without even thinking about it. It wasn't even a difficult thing to do. We just walked up the hill like it was nothing and bunched our bunched our brains out. It's pretty cool. So I'm just going to kind of keep rolling up this hill for a little bit. Keep doing some practice. Because I know you guys are going to be excited for this thing. I can tell already people are excited for this one. I'm excited for this one. Like, I love this thing. It's so sweet. So I think you guys are uh, going to enjoy it. The one thing I just want to check really quickly. Sorry. Uh, don't think my MSI... Oh, it wasn't on. I have my video card overclocked. And I noticed my frame rate was kind of low. And I'm like, wow, why is my frame rate so low? It's so odd. And it's because I didn't overclock my card. And that's what you get. Now I can hear my little fan running. Just... <laughs> Time for a new computer. I got to upgrade. Probably going to do that next year. New computer, new goodies. I need a new middle screen. I should probably get all three screens and then just upgrade everything. Do a full PC upgrade. That would be a good idea, I think. Oop. There we go. See, that's the other thing. So watch what happens. So as I turn this tree and hit it against another tree... The tree actually kind of bends around the other tree. Now, do you remember before when the machine was less weight than the tree? If I did this, my whole machine would be turning on its end. So having the ability to have that weight to really dominate the trees is huge. It's a huge, huge accomplishment for this thing. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you guys to play with it. Well, like I said, by the time you're watching this, you already have. But hopefully you guys are loving it. Because these feel so real to me now. And like I said, I've operated real... I've never, I mean, I haven't operated a buncher. I've played in a buncher, but I've never actually ran one up a steep hill or anything. But watching videos, oper I mean, I've operated excavators and button tops and other things in real life. And uh, yeah, this is, this is right on point. It feels true. Obviously, the only difference is I would uh, be bouncing around in the cab like a nutcase. With the seat belt riding across my chest, leaving a nice burn mark probably. <laughs> But yeah, no, this is good. You guys are going to have a have a heck of a time. Okay, I'm going to get this last tree and I'll be good. I mean, I could go all day. I could go all the way up to the top of that hill and just have a good time. Because bunching with this thing is a just a sweet time. All right, so let's park this over here just for now. 
Our big squeaky tracks. I like the squeaky tracks. There we go. B E A beautiful. Pretty sweet, huh? And like I said, we just killed that whole strip without even thinking about it. It was like a laugh. No problem. I'm I'm so happy. Uh the other cool effect was when I uh I got the plow on the skitter now, or on the well on the skitter or the bulldozer. Because the machines are so heavy, you can actually lay the plow flat on the ground and drive forward, and no matter what hill you hit, it seems to just push it up the hill because it dominates the blade. Before, the blade would catch on the ground and it would stop the whole machine. And that doesn't happen anymore, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, okay, well, I think I'm going to leave it here because um, there's not really much else I want to do on this map for now. Um, you'll probably see this map pop up again, like I said, in the either Logging Bros or the Logging Crew series. Uh, we're going to probably have a sweet, challenging, good time with that. Um, but yeah, so now going forward, this is, like I said, the last episode of the Rogue River. And we're going to be going on to Port Murray to do some real... For real, logging from scratch. So we're going to start off with not much. So I'm, I have rules that I'm going to set in place. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you about them on the next video when we get there. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to tell you too much. We'll, we'll get into it as we go. But uh, yeah, anyway, so thank you guys for watching this series. Um, and I look forward to the next one. I think it's going to be a super fun time just to see all the weird combinations of things we get to do. But yeah, so if you guys like the video, leave a like, leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe. And if you're in the bush, don't forget to hug a tree. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next series. See ya.